What's up guys, Megadipelli here and I'm bringing you another Pokemon X and Pokemon Y Wi-Fi back for you guys today. So today we're against the Flaming Axel. And looking at team preview, I'm running this new team. I use the word team loosely just because this is actually a six random Pokemon I've put together. Because I basically wanted to use Assault Vest Gudra and I kind of made a team with Assault Vest Gudra in. That's pretty viable. So the team is Standard Physically Defensive Rotom Wash, Assault Vest Gudra, Brave, Max HP, Max Attack. Next, we have a special defensive heat tram with rocks. Also, we have weakness policy D9, choice scarf Landris T, and choice specs Keldeo. So, that is basically the team. So, let's just get straight into the battle, shall we? So, I'm actually going to decide to lead out from my Rotom. Because looking at his team is the best thing to lead off with. Is he's actually going to lead out with his Glide Score. Obviously, this is a good matchup for me. So, what I'm going to do is uh, predict the Protect and actually go for the Will O Wisp. Just because I don't want to waste a, a Hydro Pump. As I know he's going to go for that Protect just to get his Toxic Orb activated. And now he does have a Sylveon on his team. And Sylveon pretty much wars my Rotom. So what I'm going to do is predict that. And actually go straight for the Volt Switch. Just because I can use this time to get this Switch Initiative and go out into my Heat Tram. I'm trying to set up my Rocks because he does have a Talon Flame on his team. And Rocks are always helpful. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Despite his uh, Sylveon potentially having hit a pile of ground. If it doesn't, I do know Heat Tram pretty much wars it. But as you can see, he switches on out there. So it's revealing to me that it doesn't carry the HP ground. He's actually going straight into his Stormy predicting the rocks, which is nice. I know he did have a Stormy on his team, but uh, this way I can play around it. I can force him to spin, which is exactly what I'm going to play around now. I'm going to get the free pivot switch on into my um, Gudre. He's actually, he's actually decides to go for a Skull. Thankfully, he doesn't get the burn. And uh, what I'm going to do is predict the Rapid Spin now and actually go straight for that Power Whip. Hit this thing up with a whole lot of damage. It is on Stab, but it is super effective. Coming from Brave, Max Attack. There's a whole lot of damage, around about 95%. But it does live, and the leftovers does reveal that is in fact a more defensive variant of it, Starmie. So I, I'm actually predicting the, the Glyscore switching now to easily take that second power whip. So what I'm instead going to do is drop the Draco, hit this thing up with as much damage as I can. So it's around about 6%, which is real nice, because we do know Glyscore is a big problem this gen. So what I'm going to do now is uh, expecting the Toxic. I'm, I'm actually going to switch it out into my Keldeo, rather than my Rotom, just because I don't want my Rotom to potentially be stored down. By Toxic, but it actually goes for a fling, which so therefore is revealing that is a fling acrobatic set back from fifth gen. Which uh, I can honestly say this is the first time I've seen it this gen, so that's pretty nice. But at the same time, uh, I do know he's running acrobatics with fling, and uh, he obviously revealed the protect. So I just need to find out his final uh, move set, his final uh, move, and I'm pretty sure I can potentially wall it with Rotom Wash if it is in fact EQ. So I decided to lock myself on in, into Hydro Pump, and I, I could have easily gone for the uh, stabbed. Choice Bex Hydro Pump on the uh, incoming Sylveon, but I didn't want him to protect and store more turns with the Sylveon toxic damage on my uh, Keldeo, so I'm actually going to pull a double, go back into my Heatran, and uh, potentially go for the rocks, but I'm actually predicting the Starmie to come in this time, as he's going to predict the rocks again, but he actually decides to go out into his uh, Terrakion, very risky play, as I could have gone for Log Bloom, had I did, I could have potentially got the burn, so uh, what I'm going to do now is go out into my Landris, just to get off a uh, Intimidate, and see what he potentially locks himself into a scout of damage. Looking at damage, definitely reveal that is in fact choice banded damage. So that's fine by me. And uh, what I'm going to do is in fact predict the switching out into Glyscore. I'm actually running here Power Eye, so I'm going to go straight for that. As opposed to going for the um, the U-turn guy in my Keldo, because then it can store more damage. However, had I got the rocks up, this uh, Glyscore would have been out of there. But I opted to go for Laura Plume, predicting the uh, Stormy. But either way, I know he's going to go for the Tech, so I'm just going to go for Hidden Power Eye. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to once again predict the double out into his uh, Sylveon and make the double go out into my Heatran. He's actually going to go out into his Talonflame this time around, which is fine. There's not too much the Talonflame can do to me. And I'm actually gonna, just going to use his time to uh, set up uh, my rocks. He actually reveals a natural gift. Caught me off guard. There's a whole lot of damage to Heatran. But I do tank it reasonably well, so that's fine. And uh, what I'm going to do is just going to be safe. I'm just going to go for that Protect to get a bit more left his recovery. But he's actually going to predict this very nice and go out into his Gliscor. And uh, with him bringing his Glasgow, I was actually uh, assuming he was running the Earthquake. Either that or he kind of wanted to uh, threaten me out. Either way, I'm just going to uh, predict him to go for Protect rather this turn. And actually use his time to go out into my Gudra. Just to get a free switch in. And uh, obviously try and hit this thing up with a Draco. But as you are going to see, he's going to go straight for that um, Earthquake. Which is fine, does a decent chunk. But I know I can, even after uh, Protect and the Toxic Core damage, I'm pretty sure look at how much that... Initial Draco Meteor did to this uh, Glyscore that I'm pretty sure another one will take out. So I'm actually going to predict and switch and go straight out into his Sylveon. 
So I'll make a slight over prediction. Go for the power whip. It actually stays in. Goes to ac acrobatics. But I do know this thing's full moveset now. Fling, protect, acrobatics, and earthquake. Completely walled by my Rotom Wash. I'm just going to go straight on into that. It actually goes to acrobatics. Scores a crit. Still does pitiful damage, which is nice. And uh, I can pretty much force this thing out once again. But here, I'm actually predicting a Sylveon. I'm actually going to decide to go for the um, the will o -Wisp this time, just because once I get a burn on that Sylveon, it can potentially heal bell it off, but if it does go for the heal bell, it will uh, obviously negate this Gliscor's poison heal, therefore getting rid of its poison, it's already flung away its toxic orb, and if it doesn't, then uh, obviously the will o -Wisp will be doing residual damage to it every turn, negating its leftovers, recover it, and obviously doing 6% to it each turn, so I do go for the will o -Wisp on the incoming Sylveon now, which is great. It will help me to stall this thing out because Sylveon is very special defensive, as we all know. So I do land the Willow, which is nice. And what I'm going to do now is once again Volt Switching out of there, go out into my Heat Tran just because I know it's going to go for that Protect. And I've kind of sped this bit up a bit, but I'm going to go out into my Heat Tran, predicting the Wish, sorry. And I don't want him to pass it on to his um, his Stormy. The reason why we have sped this bit up is because it's pretty stall. It's just me going for Lava Plume, him going for Hyper Voice, and uh, Wish and all that stuff. And he's basically trying to get as much damage on my Heat Tran now. As it can and try and get a free switch in from there. It's just basically falling off his Sylveon. So I'm going to go for a, uh, a final Lava Plume out now. Take out the Sylveon, which is nice. This does give him a free switch. And I believe he's going to go out into his Ampharos. And uh, I did a calc. Mega Ampharos Focus Blast does exactly 148 damage. Max damage, that is. So what I'm going to do is actually protect. Try and get to uh, enough HP back to where I know I can live a Focus Blast max damage. Is that that's exactly what he decides to go for and as you can see I'm actually on 147 HP so I can't live assuming he gets max damage but I don't want to risk it I'm actually going to go out to my Gudra just as death on at this point my uh, Salt Vest Gudra definitely putting that work though but this will give me a free switch on out into my Landris now where I can obviously threaten this thing out and either just come in and range kill it so knowing that and knowing he's going to pretty much switch on out there I'm actually going to decide to go out to my uh, I'm actually decide to go for the U-turn go out to Rotom Wash whether it goes out into Tallow Flame or his um, Gliscor is irre irrelevant. I'm just going to go out into my uh, Rotom Wash. This is in fact bringing the Talon Flame. But the way he brought it in and the HP it's on now, I was actually expecting him just to fodder off this thing. So as opposed to going for the uh, Volt Switch, predicting and switching out there, I'm just going to go sa straight for that safe uh, Hydro Pump. It actually goes for Roost, which is fine for me. I also need to land this Hydro Pump, but I don't, which is rather unfortunate. And now, because this play, I actually make a bad play. I just got a little bit annoyed about missing the Hydro Pump. I'm actually just going to stay in and go for it again. The obvious Amphro Twitch is super obvious. It pretty much uh, checks my uh, Rotom Wash. So uh, I should have gone for the Volt Switch, predicting that and gone back out to my Landris. But that's not really the case. And I'm actually going to go for Hydro Pump, then go for Volt Switch this turn. Go out into my Heat Tread now, predicting that Dragon Pulse. Which is rather unfortunate because I believe after Dragon Pulse, I'm not going to be able to uh, get up to the range of HP where I know Focus Blast. Max damage won't kill me. So I'm just going to go for that Protect, I've sped this bit up a slight bit as well, and uh, I'm on 128, I need to be on 148, but it goes up Focus Blast and misses, I'm pretty sure, don't think it's going to matter too much, it makes up for my uh, Hydro Pump miss, but the reason why I don't think it'll matter too much is just because um, we're only assuming it's getting max damage at this point, it could have potentially got min, and now I Protect and I'm at the range where I can live, but it actually misses the second Focus Blast, this one definitely doesn't matter because like I said, I can obviously... Uh, I live that and um, yeah, my I know damage is damage, but my heat tram pretty much doesn't do anything in the battle from this point on. And I roll him out into his glass score now. And I obviously don't want to take an earthquake. And I do did mention my Rotom Wash completely walls it, so I'm going to make that switch. It actually pulls a double into his track on. Nice part of this part, predicting my Rotom Wash, but at the same time, I can live anything from a choice band of track on. So, uh, but either way, I don't want to take too much damage because I want to keep my Rotom fairly healthy for the likes of his uh, Talon Flame and his glass score. And I do still have my uh, Landris just to uh, spam Intimidate, so that's what I'm going to do. Just go for Intimidate, and then uh, try and force this thing out. What he's actually going to do is go out into his uh, Ampharos at this point, just as Death Order, just to see what I potentially uh, lock myself into. But I'm actually going to predict the switching out there once again, go for that U-turn, which is nice for me. But what I'm actually going to do now is going to try and bait in the Trachyon, just because I do see my uh, Dragonite can go ham on his team. If I manage to set up, I can pretty much uh, sweep the rest of his guys. So I'm going to go out into my... Uh, Rotom Wash, forcing his Terrakion, and what I'm actually going to do now is go out into my uh, Landris just to see what he locks himself into. I was kind of hoping he would lock himself into the uh, 
the Stone Age, but I'm just going to use my Landris as uh, Intimidate fodder at this point. Fodder it off and get a free switch and out into my uh, Weakness Policy Dragonite. But as you can see, he does in fact decide to lock himself into close combat. Still 5 me because I do resist that. I can sit up on this thing all day long. And I wasn't actually expecting him to stay in. But he does just want to break my multi scale, which is a good play on his part. Because his uh, talent flame can potentially come in and take me out with a Brave Bird. So what I'm going to do is just settle that Dragon Dance like I did mention. I could have easily gone for a second Dragon Dance this turn, but like I did mention, I'm not too sure how much a Brave Bird from a Choice Band of Talent Flame does. So I didn't want to risk it. And I'm actually just going to go for that safe Earthquake because I don't want to get um, close combat and once again. Is actually going to decide just to fire off his Storm at this point. And uh, in comes the Talonflame now. I'm pretty sure I can live one at the range of HP I'm at. So that's perfectly fine for me. And I'm just going to decide to lock myself into uh, Outrage as I do live. So uh, just going to go for Outrage. He's down to his last three guys. His Talonflame, which is in fact down now. His Trachyon and his Gliscor. And uh, I'm... Pretty confident, a stab, plus one, outrage, coming from an adamant, max attack, Dragonite, is going to destroy this Gliscor, and it does completely wipe it out, which is great for me, now he's down to his last, his Trachyon, and I do in fact score the free turn outrage, had I had not scored the free turn outrage and hit myself in confusion, then, um, and lost my uh, Dragonite, then I could have either gone out to my Rotom, lived any hit, because I'm physically offensive and taken him out, so that is going to be the game, Dragonite going to ham on his last four guys, Sweeping up, so hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, of course, subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.